Okay, this is the first of what's going to be two videos on um, a DCTL. It's um, an LMT uh, print film emulation DCTL. It's uh, this is the actual code, and in the second video, I will go through how it was written. Um, it seemed like a lot, but um, anyway, the but that's the second video. This first video um, will just be about the controls and also uh, a reference to where it came from. Uh, uh, this uh, footage is uh, uh, log C L X Y gamut, and I'm in Aces. This is CCT, this is 1.1. I have process node lots in ACC, CC, AP1, timeline space, but that only is relevant if you are using um, direct um, DCTL from the dropdown, um, whereas we're going to be using the OFX plugin. Uh, if you were to use the DCTL from the drop down and you had selected uh, the ACES APO linear, uh, it would have an effect because the DCTL expects um, ACES CCT um, AP1. So, DCTL, uh, once you load the, the plugin. The resolve FX plugin and in the drop down menu, have um, there's a choice of two here. I have a, um, a neutral version, which is basically nothing's been done, all the controls are there, but nothing's been applied, everything's in a neutral state. Um, and I'll just use that for reference, that'll be available as well. Um, but we'll go back to the main one that actually has the built-in um, uh, settings for the print film emulation. Uh, we'll quickly jump over to where I actually got the the idea or the code from it. It's from um, Scott Dyer's LMT, and I've done adaptions of this before, either either as a standalone plugin which wasn't too successful, and then the ASUS DCTL set, which worked, and then the ASUS OFX plugin, and it worked, and then other combinations, but um, this one, um, a slight variation on, I mean, th this is the same thing, just in terms of just a few extra controls, or slight subtlety maybe in the um, nuance of the control, which I'll explain a bit later. But anyway, if you haven't read this article, haven't gone to the website or joined the essential do, and read all this, and it'll make sense. Uh, it's I've been harking on about it for over a year now, hoping that people will start paying attention to it. Um, because, as I've been saying, I believe, it... Um, provides the blueprint for the next stage of print film emulation and image transforms away from uh, lookup tables and towards shader based and the and therefore the infinite possibilities of combining transforms and parameters and modulation and a non-destructive workflow um, so anyway in his LMT, his kind of setup is, uh, it has an ASUS CDL uh, at the beginning, and then he, he does a series of hue rotations and some scaling, some saturation boosting, selective hue saturation boosting um, to uh, approximate the results of a, a print lookup table or print film emulation specifically um, and he converts to uh, YAB YCH um, color space uh, 
and if you go and you'll see what's going on I won't too much into it but it's all pretty much there it goes to details about what which hues he wrote the, the region and how much he rotates it and why um, and then there are comparisons there's also reference to another LMT a kind of bleach bypass but I'm not covering that in this um, yeah so do uh, really check that out and back to here we go All right so uh, the first setting actually isn't involved in his initial LMT uh, Scott's one uh, exposure it's just that because people seem to be asking for the ability to do exposure when they're grading in ACES and the LMT will convert to linear light linear space um, and the exposure is in in stops properly so it's basically multiplying the RGB channels by two to the power of and two to the power of zero is one so it's one but two to the power of one is two two to the power of two is four and so on so it stops and same with the minus now this image particular image isn't necessary wouldn't be much use but say for instance if we if we oh not that one we look at this uh, example uh, this is uh, uh, Alexa footage as well um, and it's um, it's ProRes, so it isn't a case of it coming in as raw and then you're adjusting exposure in a raw, you have to kind of do it in the timeline. So this has been either exposed to the right or whatever, just to demonstrate the latitude, but it's, I mean, you can see it's over, still overexposed. Um, so with exposure, you can bring it down three stops, which I don't know how many stops overexposed it is, but it looks like it was around three stops. And there you go, it's done in linear light. Um, um, so that could be handy in of itself. Um, and so it's an option. Um, right. So uh, scale color, it's a kind of global scale saturation, basically. Um, and the, the CDL part, which is the slope offset power and saturation, um, I've added a, a global control for the slope as well as the RGB. Um, so because when the the previous uh, versions of this LMT, there was only slope RGB, you couldn't do a, a kind of a global adjustment, which you might kind of want to. And also, um, whereas before it was the values between zero and two or zero and three, and if obviously slope, which is basically gain, if it goes down to zero, it's black, but it that was very aggressive. All those controls and those values seem to be quite aggressive, so decided um, that it's that the actual range is instead of between zero and two, it's 0 0.9 and 1.1. .1. So one is a neutral, and if you push it down to zero, that's actually 0 0.9. So it's just more subtle. So that's kind of a smaller range, but you can have, if you look at the, um, actually, all right, it's better. Uh, you can see the subtlety. Uh, and it's the same for the, the individual channels as well. So um, the value here, 0.4 on slope B is because um in the original one it was, was it 0 0.94 um but in if it's a kind of a zoomed in range 0 0.06 becomes 0 0.6 in terms of the difference so therefore it goes on to 0 0.4 and similar principle with the offset b so here he's bringing down removing um, with slope B, uh, basically introducing yellow and then bringing it, um, removing blue and introducing yellow. And then in the offset, in kind of the shadows, uh, is bringing blue back. So it kind of, that was a kind of a precursor before the the, um, the main hue rotation stuff. Um, but they're the only things that were in can reset that. There are the only things that were in the original set that were actually any any adjustments, so they're just there as an option. Um, 
contrast is in linear so it's a uh, it's a linear um, linear contrast and the pivot is 0.18 um, he's obviously obviously one would be neutral but he's added because it's you know a kind of part of the film look the contrasty look um, and probably maybe explained why he reduced some saturation in the beginning all right um, now so when it comes to the hue rotations uh, so you have a set of you know hue range rotate hue range rotate the hue one is between 0 and 360 and 0 is red smack in the middle red and range is 30 degrees so 15 degrees either side and the rotation is also in degrees and here he has five so he's rotating red a little towards yellow and then so on it's done as if you actually read uh, scott to see which much hues he chose and how much he wanted to rotate them and why there's also um a scale color which is basically boosting saturation in certain colors uh, in that case it's 60 zero so that's more towards orange it's boosting skin tones really or you know, more or less in the, because of the range um, so yeah that's how he kind of replicates uh, that particular look um, I have an option down below it says disable hue adjustments and that removes the hue parts it doesn't um, do anything about the top part so if you have in the case of scale slope b um, contrast scale you can see it's pretty much back to normal and if you then click on uh, remove that then the hue parts are back but it's really a, a combination of things that brings it uh, and there is then finally at the end uh, there's an option to have grain it's really a uh, procedural noise but it's applied in a manner it's applied to the ACCCT curve so log curve and it's applied to a blending so that um, it corresponds with 0 0.8 when converted to ACCCT. Um, so as so then when that is then the, goes through the RT and then the ODT uh, to the display space, um, it distributes the grain in a more filmic manner. So it's more in the mid-tones and then it increases a little bit as the upper mid-tones and then it falls off into the highlights and then it falls off to the shadows as well. Um, so in, have a stick it on and we're going to zoom in. Now it uses the actual RGB values to randomize it. Um, if you can maybe even go a bit closer. Um, but there, in the case of if there was uh, VFX or text or something which has a kind of a, a constant value over the frames, so therefore we'll be able to generate it. There is an option to animate the grain that you can keyframe, and you can just go back to demonstrate it. Um, you can still have kind of grain going on. Uh, grain intensity is just the contrast. You just just apply contrast at the the midpoint. So. It's a bit harsh but then this is, this is zoomed in um, and then you can obviously um, tone it down resolution is really just a case of um, doing sam more samples of the grain which gives the impression of well makes it seems kind of smaller or nuanced and so on um, and it's a bit more intensive because every process is a bit more but animate it you can see there and if then if i reduce if i reduce the resolution therefore making it big and chunky uh see there you go and that looks very 
digitally. There is an option. I have it. It's it's mono chromatic. You can have uh, RGB grain. Um, but obviously I'd sort out that resolution, maybe the intensity. Um, and this is a quick and easy option just to chuck on. It's not super intensive. I'm, I'm still getting. You know this, and this is a it's a five year old MacBook that I'm running this on, and I'm not doing. Or am I? Um, I have you know proxy mode off, so and it's still and it's doing every, I like almost every option of the 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 DCTL has been used in the case of a lot of them get options if they're not being used they gets bypassed so it's 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 economical in terms of um processing power but this is using all of it and it's still getting pretty good so it's not too too heavy but again it's an option you can turn it off i i personally i wouldn't necessarily go i wouldn't go with the rgb grain never been a fan of it but just the options there uh grain depending on risk i generally kind of would um even just to get an idea what it might look like because really a print film emulation if you're trying to use in digital, the film is green. It's a big part of it. So you gotta get, try and get it right, or at least you know, consider it. Uh, and this one is kind of tied in. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, hopefully I hope that explains most of the things that are going on. The, it says Asus CCT here, there's an option because if you, for whatever reason, if you chose in your, your color space at the beginning to go Asus CC instead of Asus CCT, then if you're Asus CC, then untick that and it'll be Asus CC. Um, and like I said, this is all just kind of ready to go. You've got the grain isn't switched on, but the all the other. Uh, the print from emulation parts are, but there, if you look at the, the neutral, you could, if you just wanted, you could use this instead. If you just wanted to use the um, exposure and the CDL parts, and maybe some of the saturation there and the grain, and not even go for the, the film looks and so on. Um, so yeah, that's another option. And I think that covers it. So the next video will be going into uh, how it was written, which is for people who really want to know how this stuff is done. Anyway, that's all for now. Oh, Judy Oak.